Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. We are here for a viewer special. This time around, we are on viewer special number 31. So, pretty excited to get going with this. I haven't been doing as many of these as I would have liked to lately, especially this last month. It's just been uh, kind of hectic between like uh, such a huge, impactful meta release with sprites, and we had to test and go over all those variants, plus uh, the Master Circuit series, the MCS, has been keeping me uh, fairly busy as well. But I did still want to make some time, uh, at least every now and then, in order to make sure that we are able to look at some of your games from you all, the viewers. So, uh, for those of you who have not seen one of these videos before, uh, I like to go ahead and, as I mentioned, give you all the opportunity to submit uh, some choice replays from your games to be featured here on the channel. I really like doing this because it lets us look at some lines and or decks that maybe we're not as used to seeing and just seeing cool games from you all is just pretty rad i think in general too so uh, there are a couple things that you can do or a couple ways where that you can submit these games uh, to be reviewed your replays uh, the main bit of information i will be needing is your nine digit player id as can be seen here uh, if you go ahead and submit that along with the uh, date and time of the replay, that way I know which game uh, specifically that you want me to see, uh, or like maybe the opponent's name, just some any amount of information that lets, you, lets me know, hey, I want you to look at this game in particular. Um, if you also want to include a little bit about like the game itself, like even something as simple as I played this deck versus this deck, or if you want to go into more detail, that's all totally fine as well. Um, yeah, just love to see those submissions from you there. As far as where you can submit them, there are a couple of places. Uh, you can go ahead and go to the description. At the description there, you will find a link to my Twitter page. Uh, you can always tweet these at me, uh, or you can just leave them in the comments of this video below, uh, and I will check both when looking for the next viewer special there. So I did previously have a sticky to Twitter thread. I currently don't have that sticky anymore, but you can also just tweet the replay at me. That's that's totally fine. I'll, I'll see it in my notifications anyway. So, All right, we have... A few games from the viewers here to take a look at. Uh, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive straight into those. Alright, so today's first game is going to come to us from Gaspaggio, who has definitely submitted a number of times before. We love to see the submissions there. And let's go ahead and take a look. I think we're going to look at a Tri-Brigade Sprite game versus Sprite Runic. It's going to be a, go figure, a common theme among the games we're going to take a look at today is that uh, there, there are going to be a lot of sprite decks involved in these games. Alright, looks like we're taking the second turn here, which is pretty rad. Um, it's pretty rad to see a game where we're going second, is what I mean. Uh, obviously this deck prefers to go first. This hand is interesting. Looks like we've got a couple of maxis. It's actually nice to have a couple of maxis because we have Sprite Blue. Normally you don't want to open two, but actually opening two in this like exact situation is honestly fine. This hand is looking pretty solid, especially if we're going second. So looks like they're going to start off with a Runic Smiting Storm. We are, of course, going to fire off with the maxi, but ooh, our opponent has a Call Bite for us. That's no good there. Alright, so let's see what they end up. Of course, they're going to drop Hugin Hero. I'm more interested to see what they end up discarding here. Okay, another Runic spell. I figured that's probably going to be the case, but yeah, we've got the Ash Blossom here, so that's pretty nice. Don't have, don't have another called by, which is good. So we can kind of deduce that like this last card in hand is probably just going to be a Runic spell uh, because of the fact that they discarded Runic Dispelling, especially because it, they Normal Summon Maxi right afterward. And the way that you can kind of figure this out is that, like, if they did not have a third runic spell to activate, they would have needed this one in order to trigger the fountain. Um, and you might be thinking, well, they can't trigger the dispelling because our opponent didn't add a card and we have a monster in our extra zone. But by normal summoning the maxi, uh, we can overlay these for gigantic sprite. And then we would have been able to use runic dispelling to special another Hugin, or our opponent would have rather been able to use runic dispelling to summon another Hugin and then trigger the uh, fountain in this hypothetical situation. So uh, you can use little bits of knowledge like that to kind of deduce what cards are in your opponent's hand sometime. Uh, and with runic, it's kind of easy to tell when they have like a runic card as their last card here. I guess in this situation anyway, so. Sure enough, Gigantic Sprite is coming down. It's got 3200 attack because we use Hugin. Pulling out the blue and then Jet and then either Starters or Smashers. In this case, it's probably going to be Starter for Red if I had to guess, but it's very dependent on what the last card in hand is. Looks like they are grabbing a Starter. Oh, and then of course we're going to go into the Sprite Elf. I'm not really sure, unless we're going for like Gin Buster, why we didn't use the 
blue as a material. It, also interesting that we went for carrot here and not the red. Okay, we're just gonna make IP anyway. I figured that was probably gonna be the case. Like, I guess Gigantic Spire was gonna go either way. So, so sure enough, this is probably a Runic card because it got set. I think it's interesting that we grab Sprite Carrot. I think it's actually right now that I think about it. Um, just thinking about the fact that, you know, there's probably gonna be more Sprite Runics than, you know, other decks in general. Like, statistically, you're just most likely um, in like Platinum and Diamond to run into Sprite Runics. We don't really have any other form of monster negation though. That's the thing. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm also, I'm honestly really torn on this decision. Whenever I play Sprite variants myself, whether or not to starter for red or carrot in a scenario like this, I really feel like you can make solid arguments either way. Honestly, Jet's a good draw. Just not a bad draw at all here. Yeah, we can normal summon the Max C. But it's gonna fire off for the L for the blue. Probably just grabbing a card to discard for the Nightmare Unicorn, if I had to guess here. Oh, they didn't summon the Unicorn. That's interesting. If they summon it now, that's a huge misplay on our opponent's part. Like, they could have easily taken this game away. Okay, now they're going for the white one with jump scare, okay. Uh, that's still actually a huge misplay. Wait, whoa, they, they could have done this actually on the last chain link. This is actually a very good tip uh, for those of you who are playing against Sprite uh, and have the ability to remove a level 2 monster. Definitely do that, like, before a priority is passed back to your opponent, because they'll probably just special summon a Sprite monster from hand and... And then it becomes much harder to shut them down. Like, yeah, if our opponent had just used the uh, IP to go into Underworld Goddess in response to the resolution of Maxi's summon, uh, then we would have just had to have passed here. Now, granted, our opponent can't attack because they use Runic cards, so it's not like we would have lost last turn. And we probably could have come back, but um, it is going to, like, you know, we're able to get ahead. I Maybe mean, not necessarily ahead, but we're able to start to get ahead here. Or establish plays, rather, uh, because our opponent did that at the wrong time. It seemed like maybe our opponent didn't have their toggle set to on. That's something that's super important. I mean, especially in this meta. In really any meta, honestly, but especially this one. Uh, if you're playing as sprites, because you have so many quick effects during your opponent's main phase. And it's not uncommon that you want to fire at least one of them, like, as soon as you're able to. Like, the instant priority gets passed back to you. Oh, sorry, I was talking about priority. I was kind of, <laughs> kind of spaced out of what our play was here. Running the kit. Oh, I see. To search the chaos, I'm gonna pitch Nurable and do a bunch of plays afterward. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. What is the card that our opponent added? What did they add off of? Uh... Do we not know. Okay, they added. A... No, they added a sprite starter. Okay. Ooh, double dragon lords is a good. I imagine we're gonna bounce. Ooh, well we would have bounced the, you know, some amount of our opponent's level two stuff. I guess they have sprite starter, so it doesn't really necessarily matter as much about keeping a level two monster off the field here. Wait, hold on. Did we add starter or did they add starter? I think we added starter actually. Maybe I'm just tripping here. Okay, turn two because they didn't have any cards left in hand, right? No, okay, we added starter. I mean, they did. I don't know. I, I should have paid better attention, to be totally honest, but... Interesting also... Oh, yeah, duh, they couldn't attack. I was about to say, oh, interesting their opponent didn't attack. Ooh, the Royal Ferragy. That looks very nice. I'm, I'm a little... More than a little jelly, I, I will admit. Let me look at this again. Ooh, very clean. All right. And, yeah, this looks like a pretty easy access code OTK here. So it's interesting, it didn't look like your opponent- Well, duh, this would be the card they drew for turn, that would be their last card. Yeah, it doesn't look like they really drew into that much gas. I mean, they did have multiple flashing fires, but it looks like even if our opponent did use the Underworld- or IP into Underworld Goddess in response to the resolution of the summon, probably still would have been able to come back just on our next turn anyway, just from the way that this played out. So thank you very much for that submission. As always, as ever, Gaspaggio is definitely appreciated. Let's go and take a look at the next game here. Okay, so our next duel is going to come to us from Phenom, who is going to... or Phenom. Uh, let's see, I think it was this game here, right? Yes, this one's going to be uh, Sprite versus Twin Sprite, so... Once again, we're having the... It's funny, over these first two games, we already have, like, all four main sprite variants uh, represented here in the viewer special, which, again, is really no surprise at all. It looks like we are going second once again. I like this. I like seeing these going second games here. This hand... Hmm. <laughs> this is an interesting hand. This is actually a really good going second hand because we have so much disruption here, but we're definitely going to need, like... I mean, any sprite monster would make this hand, like, super solid. 
I like having the talent going into our, our first turn as well. Yeah, we just need like to top deck any sprite monster or starter, and then I think we're good here. Right, looks like they're starting off with D.Va for D.Va, and then summoning a red. Okay, makes sense. Before going into Z Gigantic. Interesting that they put the Gigantic in the extra monster zone, but... Yeah, we get to make good use of Ghost Ogre here, because, I mean, yeah, the opponent can chain red, but, well, then their Gigantic isn't going to resolve. So, either way, the Ghost Ogre accomplished exactly what it needed to here. Uh, and the reason for this, you might be wondering about that, like, it's because it's not readily apparent, and, like, it wasn't to me the first time I played sprites, but Gigantic Sprite works a little bit differently than other Xyz monsters, because you can actually detach the material from any monster you control. But here's the thing. Because of the way that it's worded here, detaching the material and doing so is part of the resolution of the effect. So, um, yeah, that's why if you're able to uh, Ghost Ogre uh, or just destroy Gigantic Sprite but not negate it, it still doesn't go off. Because you have to de detach a material from a monster you control as part of the resolution of the effect there. It's not like a cost or anything, like it is with pretty much every other Xyz monster. Oof, we did not, in fact, draw... Anything. <laughs> we just drew another imp burn, that's rough. But our opponent got stopped pretty easily on their last turn, so maybe they just won't have too much here. Wow, that's really interesting. They did not activate Kissakiel's effect. Oh duh, because we have a duh, they have a monster on the field. Never mind. <laughs> I always do that. For some reason I think uh Kissakiel and Leela will trigger like even if you have a monster in play. I don't know why. Okay, opponent's going for a gigantic sprite number two here. And then they're going to link it off, which is not surprising, but that is notable because now our opponent is out of Gigantic Sprites. Looks like they have used both of theirs fairly early on in the duel, which is pretty good for us. Interesting that they brought back Leela. Did they not have... Why wouldn't you bring back Red or Carrot there? I have no idea. That's really weird. Oh my god, this is so brutal! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, okay, the triple tack. This is a nice triple tack. Oh, this is such a nice triple tack here. Yeah, because we get to make our own gigantic sprite now. Oh, so nice, yeah. I, I wondered if that triple tack was going to be how we were going to, like, you know, get an out here. And as soon as I saw the sprite elf come down that last turn, I figured that's probably what was going to be the case. The draws were just so abysmal here. Right on, going for the Sprite Elf, bringing back the blue. And then going for the IP. Interesting thing to note about Sprite Elf, uh, even if your opponent has used Sprite Elf, I believe if you take control of it, and I don't think we did it here because we just didn't have anything really good to bring back at all, or we might not have even had a target to bring back at that point during the turn. I, I just already forgot as sad as that is, but a Sprite Elf, even if your opponent uses it and you take control of it, I believe you can actually still activate the effect because it says you can, uh, and you refers to the player in control of Sprite Elf. So, um, yeah, it's not like a, a, a once per... Or no, I'm sorry, it is a once per turn. <laughs> but it's a you can. You can only use this effect of Sprite Elf once per turn. So, again, I think due to the phrasing of you, uh, that means that we could have activated Sprite Elf you know, our opponent's Sprite Elf, how do we had an actually decent target, or any target really in the graveyard to take control of there, or to bring back, rather, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what, what is this? Red Time, Reviver, Emitter. This card is in your hand, target one, change the face down, special, oh, that's an interesting level too, okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's very much a going second level too, but it's, it's interesting, you know. like we're using the red to negate and destroy it, which is a pretty good call, because then, you know, we don't want our opponent to have another level 2 monster on the field, obviously. And it looks like on that account we're actually taking care of... Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Yeah, it looks like we're actually taking care of both level 2 monsters in play. The one thing I will, I guess, okay, and they, they kind of conceded there, so... Yeah, I managed to get the win pretty nicely there. The one thing I will say is that if our opponent actually had, like, another live twin monster in hand, that would have been really bad for us. So, I think maybe we could have waited on the Nightmare Unit. Ah, but then the problem is that they can special summon sprite monsters if they have them. So, 
That's actually interesting. You could really make arguments either way. They probably didn't have another sprite monster at that point. I don't know. Yeah, you could really make an argument either way, whereas to hold or save the Nightmare Unicorn in that exact situation. Because, again, if we'd kept the Kiss of Kiel on the field and they actually have blue or jet in hand, then we're just cooked and it's that's really bad. But if they had had uh, Leela in their hand, that also would have been pretty bad for us. So, yeah, you can make an argument either way. But uh, either way, it was a very great duel. Thank you very much for submitting it. Now let's go and take a look at the next one. And our final submission for this viewer special is going to come to us from Mr. K. Mr. K is going to be rocking Tri-Brigade Sprite, and we're, it looks like we're going to be up against Invoked Runic. It's going to be this game here, I believe. So yeah, I wanted to honestly watch this one because I, I'm i thinking about picking up Tri-Sprite a little bit more. Maybe, possibly taking it to an MCS, I'm still not sure yet, but... I'd definitely like to see some more, uh, as much rather, gameplay with Tri-Sprite as I can. It's funny, looking at this hand, looks like we are going first here, but looking at this hand, this is like pretty much a regular Tri-Brigade hand right here. It's kind of funny how that works out sometimes, so. Looks like we're tanking for Fractal and then doing the regular line. Makes sense, because we, we've got Kit and Nerval in hand already, so we can just grab a Keros. We could actually just make a Gigantic Sprite and go for blue here. Looks like that's exactly what we're doing, actually. You might have wondered why we wouldn't use one of the tri Brigades effects first, uh, and that's of course because uh, if we do that, we're not able to use our Sprite monsters if, as materials for the rest of the turn, because uh, if you read any of the tri Brigade monsters here, um, yeah, this line right here. Also, you can only use Beast, Beast Warrior, and Wing Beast monsters as Link material for the rest of this turn. That's like the major thing you have to keep in mind when you're playing tri Brigade Sprite is to, uh, if you want to use Sprite monsters as materials at some point later in the turn, uh, you gotta hold off on activating the tri Brigade effects here. Alright, we've got the Elf coming down. Elf is gonna bring back the Kit, and now we can use Kit's effect. We can't use the blue as a material for this turn, but that, that, that should be fine. We can just send it away with IP potentially on the next turn. We've got the Revolt, and now we can just shuffle back that drop with there, set all three, and then pass over to our opponent. Oh, we can also use the blue as a Sprite Smasher's fodder as well. Okay, opponent's going to start with a Terraforming here. That's interesting. Oh, we, well, we already know they're on uh, Invoked Runic, right? I was going to say that's interesting, because you wouldn't expect that from Sprite Runic. Ooh, the Royal Starter. Very nice. Very, very nice. Ah, yes, the reasoning. Good call on the level two, because th they're very likely trying to dig for a Cyber Sign here. So, that was an excellent call on that level two there. Plus, also in general, like, I guess, to be fair, you might not know if this is, like, just a weird version of Runic Sprite. So, I think level two is probably the right call either way there, but... It's funny, I've been thinking about this actually ever since uh, it happened to me recently. If, if you get blind reasoning on turn one, I wonder if it's just right to call level two in general nowadays. And actually, it's funny, this reasoning hit is like illustrates exactly why when I was playing Invoked Runic, I actually Im almost immediately took reasoning out of my deck. It's because, like, you're just going to hit Alistair like most of the time. You, you, you figure that you've got three Alistair, one Cyber Sign. You're so much more likely to hit the Alistair with the reasoning. Yeah, I just, I'm not I'm not a fan of reasoning and Invoked Runic for, like, literally this exact reason as to what happened to our opponent here. Anyway, what's happened to me, like, pretty much every time I've tried to resolve a reasoning, or, act, or I have resolved a reasoning, rather, uh, in Invoked Runic. Oh, yeah, because they had the, um, they had, it's a bit unfortunate that they ended up having the, um, the spell in their graveyard. I mean, it's also, to be fair, pretty likely given what they milled off reasoning, but yeah, because they had the fusion spell, they were actually able to add back this uh, Alistair that we just banished. Granted, we had the negate anyway, but still, it's, it's definitely annoying. Alright, we're getting the fountain back. One of the fountains that was sent off reasoning. Do we already have a fountain in hand, though? Or doesn't our opponent already have a fountain in hand? Alright, so we're just going to go for Baguska here. Play the fountain. Yeah, play a runic spell. Chaining the Revolt here is... Does that actually... Yeah, yeah, because we'll, we'll get rid of the... I was trying to figure out if that actually got rid of the Fountain and prevented them from drawing, but yeah, it will. Right? I'm pretty sure. Because our opponent's turn player... 
So they'll get priority first. So they, yeah, they do their effects. And then we do Shurig. And because Shurig is going to resolve on the chain link before the fountain, we can banish the fountain, and then the fountain won't resolve. So, okay, that does work out. Good. And, of course, Baguska, unable to stop Shurig because it cannot turn Link Monsters into defense mode. Alright, so yeah, that all worked out extremely nicely. We are able to stop them from getting too much advantage. Okay, our opponent just conceded. Wow, I was gonna, like... I guess we probably have access code in the extra. I probably should have looked, but I was trying to—I was about to like, you know, hypothesize how we we're about to finish that game, and then the opponent just kind of did it for us. It's always nice when that happens. So, all right, there are our submissions for this week. Uh, thank you, everyone who submitted. Um, I say this week, you know, it's—it's it's, again, it's been a little while since we've actually been doing the series on a weekly basis, which, again, is partially my fault. I will admit, uh, just so much has been going on in Master Duel, uh, in the whole like sphere of it for me lately. So. Um, yeah, definitely do keep on submitting those games, and I, I promise I will definitely uh, try to do better about getting these out a little bit more regularly. Uh, I do, like I said, very much appreciate everyone who does submit games um, for the viewer specials here, because I really do like doing these viewer specials um, when, it, when it's possible to. But in any case, let's just go ahead and move on now to our outro. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. Uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way, so if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there, for just 5 bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack, uh, you'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on Patreon over there. We've got some Q&As, and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation, you do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.